Thank you very much for the introduction and um, uh, thanks for inviting me to this. I'm not sure as I qualified as much as a young researcher as the other speakers, but <laughs> thank you never, nevertheless. So um, today I would like to um, uh, give a bit of an overview of what we've been doing for the past um, uh, seven years, uh, where we basically tried uh, to uh, manipulate and control magnetization with uh, ultrasound or more exactly acoustic waves. This was done at the Institut des Nations de, Science de Paris uh, in Paris with my colleagues uh, Catherine Gourdon, Jean-Yves Duquesne, and um, Aristide Maître. Um, so the basics um, of this work is really magnetoelasticity and it's uh, uh, time-dependent variant, which is uh, magnetoacoustics. And that's essentially just the fact that in most magnetic materials, the uh, strain state of the sample is related to its magnetic state via this uh, magnetoelastic uh, constant, uh, giving a magnetoelastic energy. And so if you have a time-dependent uh, strain, you have a time-dependent magnetoelastic energy, and when you plug that into the LLG equation, that means you can essentially derive an effective field, a uh, magnetoelastic field that is going to be capable of driving the magnetization dynamics. And so when you think of a time-dependent strain, it's basically acoustic waves. These can be uh, in pulse form, they can be a continuous wave, they can be bulk wave, acoustic waves um, generated um, in different ways. The two main ways are thermoelasticity and piezoelectricity. And that's, that's the one we've been uh, working with. So um, these devices are typically uh, uh, made of a transducer, interdigitate transducer, a metallic, um, evaporate on a piezoelectric material. And when you apply an RF voltage on these transducers, you generate a bidirectional surface acoustic wave going both ways uh, that interacts with your uh, magnetic sample. You can then uh, uh, detect the strain as a voltage on an opposite identical transducer uh, in the time domain and, or in the frequency domain. And we, when you monitor the amplitude of the signal versus field, uh, you get something like this. Um, so this is the saw transmission versus um, the applied field. Um, and um, sorry, and so what you see essentially is the saw transmission. Uh, so the saw amplitude is constant, so 100% transmission, uh, except for a particular field. So you have a absorption, you have a, a resonant behavior, and that's essentially the field at which the eigenfrequency, the magnetic eigenfrequency, is closest to the saw frequency. So that's an effect that's well known that was studied already in the 60s with uh, bulk acoustic waves. And then there was um, a, a renewal of this basically around 2010, uh, 2011. Um, but most people here um, are looking at what's happening to the acoustic wave as it interacts with the magnetic uh, part of the sample. Uh, what we were interested in is to try to harness this effect to instead look at what's happening to the magnetic part, to the magnetization. And the motivations for this are clear when you kind of look at what happens when you excite uh, spin waves inductively. So if you just pass basically an RF current through a wire, uh, you excite an RF field uh, that decays quite rapidly and with um, um, XYZ component that vary uh, in space. And so this is a fairly inefficient way to excite uh, magnetization dynamics. Instead, the idea here was to excite a surface acoustic wave that would excite in its wake uh, the ferromagnetic resonance. And so here, um, because the acoustic waves are very weakly damped, you have potentially a remote fMR excitation. Uh, you know very well the components, the XYZ components of your exciting fields, um, because it's just this needle elastic field that you can calculate very easily. And um, of course, there's the idea that this is driven by an electrical field, not a current. So potentially dissipates less energy and uh, also wireless, um, although probably a less efficient uh, excitation, of course. And this is, uh, of course, appealing uh, um, for, uh, for applications. So the system we tried to test this concept on is now uh, quite fallen out of fashion. It's uh, gallon manis arsenide. Uh, it's a magnetic semiconductor that has a fairly weak uh, Curie temperature, so about 150 Kelvin. Um, but it has quite interesting properties. Um, it's grown on a piezoelectric substrate, which is really convenient to evaporate the transducers on. Its typical precession frequencies are around the gigahertz, which is typically what um, a Rayleigh wave of frequencies are, are, are at. It presents large magneto-optical uh, effects, convenient to detect uh, the dynamics. Um, and finally, uh, when you look at the uh, strain components that are excited by these Rayleigh waves, well, this fit very nicely the magnetoelastic energy of the material. So 
using the system, um, we demonstrate the, the several points that I'd like to uh, illustrate today. I, I will not go too much in the theory. I, I don't have time. Um, please ask me questions afterwards or look at our papers. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you that we can achieve um, with this system force magnetization dynamics in the linear but also non-linear uh, regime, and that we can go all the way to a uh, saw-driven, so surface acoustic wave-driven uh, processional switching. Um, Okay, so um, our sample looks something like this. This is just a, a microscopy image. In the bottom third, we have the, these transducers, uh, and the top two thirds is the gamma arsenide. And so um, I'm exciting here a surface acoustic wave with a pulsed 452 megahertz uh, voltage. And this creates a sogwing uh, here upwards and downwards. And now I'm synchronizing this electrical uh, um, uh, signal with, uh, sorry, with um, femtosecond uh, optical pulses. These pulses are linearly polarized. And then what we do is we monitor how the polarization of this light has rotated uh, after reflection of the sample. Uh, we then delay the arrival time of this, uh, these laser pulses, and uh, we basically get something like this polarization rotation versus optical delay. This is 12 nanoseconds. And uh, you see a very nice uh, oscillating signal that oscillates um, at, at the same frequency as the uh, exciting uh, uh, electrical voltage. And we know this polarization rotation uh, through magneto-optical effect contains uh, information on the magnetization dynamics. And so what you're seeing here really is you're witnessing the magnetization precessing under the effect, uh, force uh, precession under the effect uh, of the acoustic wave. We can then monitor how the amplitude of the signal varies with field, and we guess uh, we get a nice uh, resonant uh, behavior right here. This is curve rotation versus field, and you see it peaks here at 20 millitesla, exactly the same field at which the saw trim transmission uh, um, was the lowest, which is essentially a clean demonstration that all the energy that is lost by the acoustic wave is transferred to the magnetic system and fuels um, its precession. So this was, I think, quite a nice demonstration of, of this uh, really coupled uh, magnetoacoustic resonance. Um, and so we tried to go a bit beyond. Um, instead of doing, um, uh, instead of varying at the time, we rastered in space this time at a fixed time delay. And here you have a very nice spatial image of the dynamics where the periodicity you, hear, uh, you, you see here is the six micron period of the surface acoustic wave. And so here, this is a 60 micron image, but I could go much further and really show you that we have a, a coherent excitation over very long distances because the surface acoustic waves are very weakly damped. What we also notice is that um, at certain temperatures and fields such that, such that the precession frequency uh, started to get uh, nicely close to 2 saw, we could get the second frequency appearing in the time domain uh, right here. I hope you see uh, this um, the second frequency. And also in the spatial domain, you see here, we, we don't have just one saw, uh, one period. We, we also have lambda saw over two. Um, so likewise, we can uh, monitor the amplitude of the signal, the F saw contribution, the two F saw contribution, and we see a nice quadratic um, behavior versus saw amplitude. And here is linear and then sublinear behavior for the F saw component. Um, so for, for us here, what was quite interesting is that um, we were getting um, this uh, frequency doubling at very small uh, saw amplitude, so without any threshold. And that's not um, necessarily the case. There, there are other systems like the ones we, we talked about um, earlier this afternoon, like STNO, where um, the nonlinear behavior usually comes with the price of um, um, a threshold, a threshold power or threshold uh, current, uh, for instance. Um, the last thing I want to show you is one step beyond just this frequency doubling is going to very nonlinear dynamics. So that's what happens when instead of just rotating around its equilibrium position, uh, the magnetization rotates around the applied field. This is what happens in um, kind of trad traditional precession switching. So what we predicted in 2013 is that for large enough strains, we would be able to have this very large uh, amplitude around the applied field. And if we stopped the excitation, the acoustic excitation at the right moment with the right phase, we would be able to switch from one static position to another static position. 
And so we, we demonstrate that experimentally on out of plane magnetized uh, gamma exarcinide and also in plane magnetized uh, gamma exarcinide. This is what I'm going to show you here. So this time, this is a uh, cure microscopy image, so a static image. Um, we have again our transducers right here, uh, and the sample is uh, magnetized to the right. Here, this is an image taken at 100 Gauss after a one gigahertz salt pulse. So it's just one uh, one salt pulse uh, at one gigahertz and uh, 20 Kelvin. So we just have this white blip here, which means I've, I've basically not reversed anything. If I increase the field and bring it closer to the resonance field, 125 Gauss, 137, 160 Gauss, I see that we have switched very nicely on the path of the, of the saw, not out of the path of the saw, uh, and that we have these very char characteristic um, flame-like uh, structures in the domain, and this we were able to reproduce very nicely with the new max simulation, and they basically come from the uh, non-homogeneity of the magnetoelastic uh, constant. And once again, if you go to the other transducer, this is uh, actually equally efficient. So basically, we have a resonance switching. Um, uh, we were able to correlate the efficiency of the switching with how much the saw has been uh, absorbed, really uh, uh, demonstrating the processional, uh, right, the resonant nature of the switching. And uh, this is wave-like um, switching. So that means then we can play around with these uh, wave to do things that, we, that are, I guess, much harder to do when you're switching with a, um, a current or a pulse field. So for instance, we can excite two opposite transducers to create a stationary acoustic wave. And you see here, we have a nice uh, fringe pattern uh, with a lambda saw over two period. We can vary the salt frequency, it varies uh, the fringe period. And we can even delay uh, the risk, well, modify with the, the respective phase of one pulse with respect to another. And uh, I hope you see here, this is the, the coordinate of, the, of, of these stripes versus the respective phase, and we see a very nice shift. Um, so basically a, a very accurate submicronic uh, positioning of these stripes, even though the saw is, um, um, has appeared in the micron range, I guess. We can also excite um, uh, orthogonal transducers, and then we get this nice uh, diagonal stripes, uh, for instance. And then we could go on to do focusing, diffracting, lensing, uh, etc. There's th there's a lot to have uh, fun with. Um, so I think my time is up. Um, uh, so yeah, I hope I've convinced you that we can indeed perform force excitation of linear and nonlinear dynamics uh, with a surface acoustic wave. We can do remote as in long distance excitation. Uh, this was from a slightly different configuration where we could really see that over two millimeters were still very, very efficient. And um, as perspective, I'd, I'd like to mention some very recent papers that are quite exciting. Uh, where um, these, these uh, uh, people try to do uh, processional switching on uh, with saws on uh, magnetic tunnel junctions. Also the use of saws and magnetoacoustics on uh, magnetics and dy dynamic uh, uh, magnetic crystals. Uh, and also just to remind you that most magnetic materials, ferromagnetic and antiferromagnetic like are uh, magnetostrictive. And so we can also implement uh, this on different materials as has very nicely been predicted in this paper where they looked at the influence of a saw on a SAF uh, synthetic uh, anti -ferromagnet. And uh, yep, yeah, well, that's it. I'll conclude and um, thanks again. And I'm open to your questions in live or, or in the chat. Right.